So in this video, we're going to recap the Hello World demo that we built in the previous video. And what I have open right now is the Xcode project. And all it is is a single view application. And all we did was go to viewcontroller.zip and we dragged a label, a UI label onto the view and we changed the text from label to hello world and then we ran it. So I'll show you what that looks like again. So it's just a blank gray screen with hello world. So the question I wanna ask is how did it get to this point? Well, if you take a look at this diagram and it's gonna look very similar to uh, the previous app flow diagram a couple of videos ago, but basically if you look at the files that you have here in Xcode, the app delegate is the entry point. So according to this diagram, um, the app execution starts at the app delegate, and then it gets to the view controller object, which creates a view object from the zip file. And in that view object, you have a UI label. And essentially, that is how you end up with this iPhone app in this iPhone simulator. So in the previous tutorial, we talked about how objects that are created reside in memory. Looking at this diagram, we have you know a whole bunch of objects here in this app execution. So all of these objects reside in memory. So you must be wondering how does the view controller.zip file become an object? Well, the zip file is actually a special interface builder file format that gets interpreted by Xcode and then a view object is created from that based on what you've specified through interface builder. The view object it also resides in memory. Now going back to the view controller class, when an instance of the view controller class gets created and if you remember, the view controller is supposed to manage the view. So in order for the view controller object to manage the view, it must have some sort of way to find it, right, in memory. And in fact, there is. The view controller object has a view property that references the view object. So a property is, is just a way for a class to keep track of something. So the view property points to the location of the view object in memory. So when the view controller needs to do something with the view and needs to manage it somehow, it can follow this property, this view property that it has, and find the view object in memory. So now that you know that the view controller object can access the view by going through the view property, let's try adding another label to the view. But this time, let's do it through code and let's do it through the view property of the view controller. So I'm going to go to viewcontroller.m and if you don't remember, there's a .h and a .m file for the viewcontroller and those two files constitute the viewcontroller class. So the .h file, known as the header file, is a way where you describe all of the properties and the methods and you know everything else that the view controller has to offer. And the .m file, otherwise known as the implementation file, is where you actually implement those methods and you write the code and the logic behind the class. Another way to think about it is the .h file is kind of like a table of contents for the view controller. And the .m file is actually the, the text or the contents of those chapters in the table of contents. That's a very high level analogy, but that's essentially what we're doing. So if we open up viewcontroller.m, we'll notice that it already has two methods. So we, we haven't introduced methods yet, so let me do that now. There's this method called view did load and another called did receive memory warning. And you can see that there's a couple of lines of code right here surrounded by two curly braces. So this whole chunk right here is a method and this whole chunk right here is another method. And the method titles are view did load and did receive memory warning. So what a method is, think of it as an encapsulated chunk of code or logic that can be referred to or accessed or called upon to execute that chunk of code. So in view did load, um, whatever code we write in here, when the view did load method gets accessed or called upon from somewhere else, the chunk of code in between these two curly, base, uh, curly braces will be executed. So in this particular case, the view did load method gets called after the view is fully loaded. And this is where we'd want to add another label to the view because when you try to add something to the view and the view hasn't loaded yet, then it's nothing's gonna happen. And so in the context of this view controller, it's going to access that view controller.zip file and translate it into a view object. And then it's going to load that view and assign that view to the, its view property. And then finally, this view did load method will be accessed. So in this method, I'm going to uh, create a new UI label and 
don't sweat about how this code looks about creating it. Uh, let me type it out and I will talk to you about it in a second. Okay, so I've written three lines of code and let me just run it now so I can show you how it looks like. So you can see that it's actually added another label on here. It's got a white background and the text is hello again. This initial hello world label was the label that was translated from the interface builder file or the zip file. And then once that view object was loaded into the view controller, the view controller then called this method right here called view did load, where we created a new label, changed the text to hello again, and then we added that label to the view. I just want you to take a look at this part, this line right here. So self refers to this particular instance of the class. So self refers to this object. Dot view, this is the way to access the property. We mentioned that there was a view property before that was pointing to or referencing the view object in memory. So this is how the view controller knows where the view object is in memory. And by saying self.view, I'm saying that access the object referenced by the view property and then add subview. And this add subview is actually a method of the view object and I'm passing in the label which I created. So don't worry if this doesn't make too much sense, we'll break it down. But what's important to note is that I want to introduce the concept of properties and how the self.view is accessing the view object that was created by viewcontroller.zip because when viewcontroller.zip is turned into a view object, it gets assigned to this view property. So now if this concept of properties is used to keep track of objects, then if we go back to our app flow, how does the app delegate object keep track of the view controller object? Well, you guessed it, it's by properties again. So if we take a look at appdelegate.m implementation file of the appdelegate class, and if we look at this method here, did finish launching with options, this method is automatically called when the app is launched. And I want you to ignore all of this code, but take a look at this line of code right here. So self again refers to this app delegate object and dot view controller is a property. So the app delegate class has a property called view controller and what's happening here on the right hand side of this equal sign is that a new view controller instance is being created and the equal sign is saying that create a view controller object in memory and then assign it to this property. So now the app delegates view controller property is referencing that object, that view controller object. So this is how the app delegate object has a reference to the view controller object. And then the view controller object has a reference to the view that's get cre that got created by the view controller.zip. Okay, so now let's go back to view controller.m and take a look at how to create objects. We already saw an example of this here. So um, I'm creating a new UI label object. And you see this notation here. This is the class name UI label. And this alloc method is a method that will um, create space for this object in memory. So it's saying allocate some space in memory for this object. If you haven't noticed by now, you call methods with these square brackets. So if I wanted to um, create allocate space for this UI label, this would be it. I would be basically saying create a UI label object and this method would return an object for me. And then I'm going to call another another method of that object that gets returned called init with frame. And init is usually called to initialize the object that is returned from alloc. So you will usually see um, objects create, created like so. It will be like class name alloc and then with nested frames again and then this would get assigned to something some variable you know some class name variable name. 
So usually this is the sort of statement that you will see to create an object. And that's kind of what we have here. So this is a variable, which we haven't uh, we haven't talked about. But essentially, a variable is something that I use to keep track of objects which I create. So right here, I've created a variable called label, and it's going to point to an object of type UI label. And this right hand side part right here is creating the UI label object in memory, and I'm assigning it to a variable called label. So now whenever I want to access that object which I created, I can go through this label variable so that's uh, that's essentially what I'm doing down here in the next line I'm saying access that label object through this variable and access its text property and assign it this piece of text right here now the reason why this is init with frame instead of init is because I could very well have had just init right here but init with frame is another special initialization method which lets me pass in a set of coordinates and a, a size to create the label with. So the very fact that I had this meant that I was creating a label at x coordinate 0, y coordinate 0, with 200 pixels width and 50 pixels height. And if we go back to appdelegate.m, we take a look at that line where view controller gets created. See, this is the app delegates view controller property, and we're assigning it a new view controller object that gets created. So notice the alloc statement. It's allocating space and memory for this new object. And then again, it's using a special initialization method called init with nib name. And nib was actually the old name for zib. So you can think of this as zib name. So it's basically saying initialize this view controller object with a zip named view controller. And so when this view controller object gets initialized, it's going to look for this view controller zip file and then um, translate it into that view object and then assign it to its own view property. And that's how you get this diagram right here of this app flow. So I hope that wasn't too confusing, but if it was, don't worry. We're going to do a lot of object creation. We're going to work a lot with variables and methods and stuff like that. So I'm sure over the next two demos that we're going to do, um, you'll get, you're going to get a better grasp of it. Let's do a recap right now of what we went through today. So we talked about how the app flows from one end to the other in our Hello World demo, starting with the app delegate. Uh, it creates a view controller object, gets it has a reference to it, and then the view controller object goes ahead and turns that view controller zip file into a view object and assigns it to itself so it has a reference to the view. And then finally, we put a label on the view from the view controller. We also introduce the concept of properties and how one object keeps track of other objects using properties. We talked about how to programmatically create and add additional UI elements to the view controller's view. And we talked about how we can create instance of classes called objects. So that was a, a pretty heavy tutorial in terms if, if you're new to programming, these concepts of classes, objects, variables may seem foreign to you but we're going to practice it and you're going to have a better grasp of how it works and what it is as soon as we do more demos. So continue watching, don't give up. As always, don't forget that there's a link to the notes below and also you can ask questions in the comments below if you have any questions. And if you enjoyed this video and you feel like you learned something, please share it with your colleagues and friends and it would really help me out and build my audience. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video.